Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM22 story, The Head Coach with me, Daniel. We're back for part 26 today and I've partly ruined my episode plan by having some struggles in the FA Trophy. But the key event today will be Dover v Weymouth, second v third in the National League South. But that's not enough. Don't forget our pre-season objective to win the league and at the moment... It's looking very unlikely. If you're looking forward to the episode, seeing what's happened since the last episode, and of course the title, we've lost another centre half. Then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content from two long-term stories. It's been a crazy third season with Hemel Hempstead Town, and you can find a link to that story up in the eye above if you've missed any of it. And there's also the Twitch channel for regular live streams, as well as much more. But for now... We're back to focus on Dover Athletic. We've made it to the new year. We're virtually at the halfway point of the league season. And it's looking a little bit difficult. Not because we're doing badly. We're well over two points a game. We've got a great goal difference. We're generally pretty consistent. However, Wealdstone are just an unstoppable force. They've dropped nine points all season. And we've only been able to tighten the gap by two points in the last month or so. They look like the side that are just going to run away with it. And they're on course for well over 100 points. What on earth are we supposed to do when you find a side like that? We've had a few little minor injuries. Another one in TJ Bramble today. And we've also had some disasters on the transfer front. And I know I've asked you to comment in the last couple of episodes about if you've ever seen this before. Where a director of football and head of youth development just continually go all out for under 18s. Because the same thing is happening again. The problem is they're selling players that are capable of playing in the senior team. Thankfully, they did reject an offer for Matt Everett, which came in at the start of the EFL transfer window. But for us, in terms of outs, you can see the immediate one on the right, which is Jovain Fidley. I know he's a youngster, but he was playing at centre-half half the time because we'd obviously lost Forbes earlier in the year. So he's now gone as well, and we've got no replacement. Another youngster went in Bernard Brennan, and while it looks great, we've signed God knows how many players. The last one, I think, was Tobin, wasn't it, in the last episode? So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more players, all 16 or 17-year-olds in the youth team, which, by the way, is now about 35 players deep. It's absolutely ridiculous. We've got a youth intake coming in about three months, and I just don't know where they're going to go. There's literally hundreds of these kids, and most of them are absolutely rubbish, which I really don't get. So it's been a very frustrating time. I'm not going to keep introducing them all because it's doing my head in a bit now. My hope is, with the EFL transfer window open, maybe some decent loan players pop up. I don't know. Am I being optimistic? We'll wait and see. Let's have a look at the youth candidates, though, because we've got our preview for this year's youth intake, and it's good. It has the potential to be a golden generation for the club. Attacking midfielders, very much the star of the show by the looks of things. Goalkeepers supposed to be good. Not really the areas we need, but at this point, we'll take anyone that can fill the squad. Just a shame, really, that there's no better centre-halves coming through. But a little bit of a bizarre situation. I don't think I've ever seen this in the head coach before. And while I've no problem with them getting 30 youth players in, if that's what they want to do, to not get a senior player in when you're letting two in the same position go just doesn't make sense. And it's probably the difference between us and Wealdstone now because we have the odd silly game where we let in goals. On that subject, let's have a look at the schedule and what's been happening since you were last with me. Lots of games we've got through and a couple more than we really needed. So you were with me as we battered Maidenhead and then got beat by Tranmere in the FA Cup first round. We followed it up a little inconsistently. A comfortable win at home to Slough. Cowan with the opener and then two for Ola Adabomi up front. We then lost 3-2 at Chelmsford. Really disappointing one this. We were 3-0 down again just past the hour mark. And we have that odd day. You can see the keeper was poor. Cowan was poor at right back. Hansen doesn't look comfortable at centre half. And he's having to play there. And when we get that odd physical team that really tests us going forward, we haven't got the answer because we're playing a holding midfielder centre half, a centre midfielder in the holding role, and so on and so on. And of course at that time we also had TJ Bramble away on international duty too. So a difficult one for us. We did bounce back against Gosport as we got a run of pretty easy fixtures after that. 4-1 at home there, Bramble with a pen, 3 all with one and 2 for Kadua in the first half. Against Ashford United in the FA Trophy, we basically took advantage of the 30 youth signings, got them involved in the squad. It was James Bibbo from the penalty spot and Harvey Nibs with a second half winner. We got a 5-1 win at home to Tombridge, a well-rested squad in the league, of course. We ended up with three and a half weeks off there because of a game getting postponed. I think it might have been the Kinstonian one, actually. 
But Ola Adabomi got two. Nibs, Bramble and Friel all got one each. We beat Farnborough 3-0 away from home. Cowan, Kadua and Ola Adabomi. His one was from the penalty spot. Before a disappointing one-all draw against three bridges, which arguably might have helped us. It was Kadua who got the equaliser there. We won the replay on Boxing Day 1-0. And that got another one of our fixtures moved later in the month. That meant we didn't have two games in three days in the league. So maybe it helps us out. But we've now got midweek games every single week throughout January. And it's going to be difficult with the squad we've got. Jake McCarthy got the winner in the replay. We battered Concord 5-2. Could do it. Cowan and an own goal. Plus Everett with a brace. And then against Bognor Regis. One of the basement sides in the league. We rested a couple of players. We tried to think ahead for the weekend. And they made it easy. We got two quick goals. Then they went down to 10 men. And then they went down to nine men after we got a third. Bramble could do it and Nibs with the goals there. So it's going to be a busy month. Of course, we're probably going to have to throw the FA Trophy now because Torquay are in between two big home league games that I really need to win. And we've got to stay in the title race. We've met all of our objectives elsewhere. Financially, the club's in a pretty good position. There's still transfer budget. There's still wage budget. But there's no players coming in. And if we get one injury at the back to either left back or centre half, we're in big trouble if it's more than one game or two. Having said that, this is the head coach and we've got to plough on through the fun and frustration. So let's go and have a look at our first fixture, a massive one against Weymouth. They probably weren't able to rest people on New Year's Day. How did they get on actually? Just trying to find them there. Doesn't look like they played. So what on earth has been happening with Weymouth, who, to be fair, with a game in hand are three points behind us, that game in hand must have been a cancelled one on New Year's Day. But they're in good form. If you take away the FA Cup where Bolton battered them and the FA Trophy where maybe they arrested people and got shocked, they've had a similar run of fixtures to us actually in nearly all the bottom half teams and they've got incredibly good results against them. This is the start of five successive away league games for them though and we'll be hoping that we can change things around. Great sponsor as well, Dormeo Mattresses. Absolutely brilliant. You only get that sort of stuff in non-league. Let's get through the tactical meeting. Let's go and have a look at our lineup and we'll just try and keep everyone as fresh as possible. But not easy when you've only got two centre halves. So in my view, we're basically down to 17 players that can make a difference in this squad. We've had Sweeney out injured, we've had Bibbo out injured and we've now got Bramble out injured. There's a couple in McCarthy and Adabomi who are unfit. Sweeney, I rested him on New Year's Day in the hope he'd be fit for this. He's not. But we're playing bottom half sides after this for the midweek. So we've got to get him in for this game. And then in midweek, we'll have to play Bailey Elam out at right back or Bramble if he's back. And we can maybe put Cowan on the left again. But it's far from ideal, the position we're in. I was tempted to rotate a bit more. Avenal is someone we could bring in, but he's not a centre half that's going to win us the league. And this is one of the toughest sides we're going to face. Don't forget our first game in charge was against Weymouth. We lost 1-0 on the opening day. And they were resilient, if nothing else. So let's go and get into the game. Our lineup for today is hauling goal. Cowan and Sweeney, the fullbacks, with Hansen and Ness as centre half. We've got Squires, Friel, and Smith, the midfield three. Kadua and Everett, the wingers. And then Harvey Nibs in up front as Ola Adabomi is not quite fit. And to be honest, there's not a lot of legs on the bench if we need it. We're down to the bare bones. And that is with an almost fully fit squad. Concerning times, director of football needs to save us. But on the pitch, we're in charge. Let's see if we can win. So for us, it's four changes. For Weymouth, it is three. I'm hoping we'll be able to edge them physically because maybe if they're playing their strongest squad, they will have had to put more legs in. But it looks like they've had longer rest than us. So this might be one of those days that's a little bit tougher. Let's go and have a look. We'll leave the latest scores on actually because Wildstone's results are now important. Let's see if we can get on top. We're sticking positive. We've generally been excellent at home this year. It's on the road we've struggled a bit. As Ness misses another fun post header. He's winning nearly all of them at six foot four. We know the set pieces. The attacking sides are so overpowered. And this is the same here. But Ness not taking many of his chances. With a quarter gone, there's not been much in this game. As we're back with half an hour on the clock, Ness winning the ball in his own area. Gets it away to Kadua on the right. We could really do with opening the scoring before the break here. Nibs up front, ironically. Knackered already, despite being the fitter of the two. Kadua gets himself in though. Can he cut the ball back? He can. To Cowan, to Zach Smith. 25 yards out, releases Squires and Friel! Oh, he needed that. Ben Friel to the rescue with a brilliant strike from 20 yards. And in a game where we hadn't really created much, we hadn't opened our opposition up too much. That was the sort of moment we needed. A wonderful finish to give us the lead. And in a game that's not really got much between the two sides, 
We've managed to get the lead before half time. However, Wildston are still the unstoppable force. It is absolutely ridiculous the form they're in. And I've got to say, I've noticed that more this year. If you go back to season two with Hemel Hempstead, and if you look at this season here, it's a runaway side. I guess even with TNS, I know it was more expected when we were at Keffen Druids. But we are seeing sides that can keep pace and run away with it a bit more. Make it two horse races. Make it difficult. And at the moment, we're just trying to keep pace. As Kadua gets in, that's a penalty. He's on a yellow card. I wouldn't have minded a second. But the more important matter is can Harvey Nibs put it away? 2-0. And you start to think we're looking a bit more comfortable. He is a good taker. And he makes the most of it. Harvey nibs into the bottom corner. One of the best signings of the season. Because it has given us that ability to rotate up front. We can just give one of them a rest each time. And we're not really any weaker for it. If we can score this free kick, I will give Sweeney a rest too. Let's see if we can do it. Zach Smith steps up 20 yards out. Oh, it's a brilliant effort. Went the opposite way to we were all expecting. Didn't go wall side. Nearly caught the keeper out. If it remains 2-0, it hits the woodwork. Squires mops up lovely there. Back to Hall, the keeper. Out to Sweeney on halfway. Can we create that third? He's got Everett outside of him. Releases him. He beats his man. It's a lovely touch. Great footwork. Gets to the byline. Cuts it back to Nibs. To Ben Friel. To Everett. To Friel. It's lovely football, but can someone get the shot away? Friel 25 yards out. And it seems to have just died down for a minute. Though Kadua finds Zach Smith. Oh, they've both been at it. Friel and Smith score a screamer apiece. 3-0, 57 minutes gone. That's got to be game over. I don't want to be arrogant, but we've got to rest Sweeney. He looks complacent anyway. So Cowan out to left back, Elam right back. Neither of them can play in those positions. We'll give it 10 more before deciding what else to do. Because ideally, I'd like to rest three players here. You've got to say as well with that goal, there was the sort of 15, 20 passes before it. It was fantastic stuff. And to be fair, Nibs, back to goal in the box, didn't try and be greedy, just got the job done. So it's long over the top, that's really poor. And it's Hansen again. He keeps getting caught out because he's not a centre-half. But we've got to give him credit. He's doing a job there for us. And he's not natural at it, he's not comfortable, but he's a good footballer. And he's making himself heard. He's doing the best he can. And with no alternative, he's keeping us high up the league. As Stevens gets it 30 yards out to Seddon. Little spell for Weymouth here. We might just want to freshen things up a touch. I'm going to take Harvey Nibs off, I think. And we'll make the last change in a few minutes. Once I've made my mind up. As Everett goes all the way back to the keeper hall. Made a great save a minute ago, didn't he? As Nibs knocks it down for Kadua. Beats his man. He's turned him inside out. Oh, it's a great save by Mersin. Tips over the bar to keep the score respectable. And now my question is... Do I rest Ness at centre-half, so I've got him for midweek, as he nearly scores a goal there? Or do I take off Everett, who not had his best game today, and does seem most of the time to be the beating heart of this team? The problem is we haven't really got attackers on the bench. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Adabomi on the left, I'm going to put Kadua up front, I'm going to put Zach Smith on the right, and in the middle I'm going to bring on McCarthy. Then we'll hope once we get to the midweek game. In fact, no, we'll bring on Afanawozi because he never gets a game. He's not really on the fringes even of the first team. But he has to be in the squad when there's two or three injuries. We'll hope Bramble's back in midweek. We'll hope that Sweeney recovers from this. But now we just want to see the game out because you can't take sides like this for granted. How are Wildston doing? Doesn't help that the latest score graphic keeps breaking this year, especially for the teams near the bottom of the alphabet. As Adabomi turns to Kadua, can we get our goal difference up? It might come down to that this year, the way we're going. As it's wide to Elam on the right-hand side. Again, not confident there at all, but doing a really solid job. And basically, we're a team of midfielders in the back four as soon as we get a knock. Whether it's into the back post a moment, Adabomi just over. Whether it's Elam now, whether it's Hansen at centre-half. Even when it's TJ Bramble covering at fullback, they're all natural midfielders who are just doing a job for us. This squad is so short of defenders, it's ridiculous, really. As Cowan's oversurging at left back, it's brilliant work from him. Out to Adabomi. He's got support, but turns his man. He can cross it into the box here, forces it to the corner flag. Back to Friel. It's another penalty kick. Who's going to take it? I mean, there's no one on the pitch with a penalty taking rating better than five. Adabomi's the best striker, he's the most composed. Let's see what he does. Up he steps. He has scored a couple this year already. And 4-0 would be a real statement. Olorada Bomi sends the keeper the wrong way. It wasn't the best pen. It wasn't in the corner. But it was confident. He did the trick. 
and we're now looking in pretty good shape. Wildston are a couple of goals up, they keep the six point lead, and no matter what we do at the moment, no matter how consistent we are, Wildston are unstoppable, and unless we get signings at the back, maybe even get a player from them, come on director of football, do something for us. We'll be back in a moment for Kingstonian, and our away form has to keep up with the pace. Back on Tuesday night to test our away form again. Another sign-in since the last game. And of course, you've guessed it, it's another under-18. No offers going in, and I'm starting to rescind my good faith towards Kevin Wilkin in pre-season. Because this is getting silly. You can see Sweeney is just about fit, as is Bibbo. TJ Bramble has not made it. And there is another game on Saturday and then Tuesday, so we have got to be careful here. I want to very quickly look at Wildston, who just continue to be a machine at the moment. We have a look at the schedule for how they've been getting on. I know they lost in the FA Trophy there, but look at the run in the league. When did they actually last lose a league game? It was fifth game of the season. So their only defeat was against us. They've not lost to anyone else since, and that was in a, a two games in three days period. After that, they're unbeaten for ages. They've now won six league games in a row. They've not got the FA Trophy or FA Cup to worry about. And they only drop points in the league after FA Cup games. So you've got to argue that they're going to be unstoppable now. The difference between us and them is they're continuing to get players in. Their manager, director of football, whoever it is, after the pre-season rush, has made a real effort in the loan market. So in December, they got Caelan Lyons from Watford, who is a brilliant centre midfielder. And Ty Hornsley from Peterborough, who's another solid centre midfielder. It's their beef in their squad. We're not doing that. So I'm a little bit frustrated at the moment. We've got to try and keep pace. Wilson's game has been postponed against Weymouth. So they might have a bit of fixture congestion. And we're going to have points on the board if we take advantage and get the result. This is the crucial thing at this stage, is we have to win our games and put real pressure on Wilson to say, if you don't win your game in hand, it's going to get a little bit tense now. But we have had our odd slip-ups on the road. We talked about the Chelmsford game. We have just about got everyone fit. I want to try and freshen things up very slightly. So Bibbo back on the bench for Afina Wozi. We're going to take Nibs out for Adabomi again. And then do we do anything in midfield or defence? I think that's the strongest we can be. Without Bramble, who's the natural one to rotate in, we don't really have anywhere we can strengthen the squad. So our 11 sees just the one change. It is up front at a bow meet back in for Nibs. Now let's see if on the second of today's double header, we can get a consistent result on the road. I don't care what the score is. I don't care who scores. I just want to win. Let's see if we can. Well, not many recognisable names in this Kingstonian side. The only one I recognise off the top of my head is Ben Davis, who we've had on trial in the Hemel save at one point. But nothing else that really stands out. They are one of the relegation scrappers in the league. They're a side we should be beating. But so were Chelmsford when we came up against them and it didn't work out. Not many games in tonight. It doesn't look like Wilston Weymouth is going ahead. Although it is listed there in the scores. Let's see what result we can get. Fingers crossed everyone. We have to win. We've started brightly. A couple of shots but nothing on target. We've got to throw deep in our own half with Sweeney. To Squires who plays a 1-2 with him. Can we catch them on the counter? Sweeney surging forward. It's good work from him. Place to Everett. To Sweeney again. It's something we will have to talk about later in the season. The managing of the squad. As Smith puts in Adabomi. That is a very, very important goal. And it's a good finish too. Well done Adabomi. Great ball from Smith again. And we get the lead after 14. But going back to my original point. Something we will have to talk about and review in this save. Because this season, the management of the squad. The management of training and the intensity is to an extent, and I know you think we're doing well with a small squad of players, but that side of the management has been so time-consuming compared to normal. I've had to make sure we keep people fit, that when we've got the three games in a week, we're doing light things like set pieces, like team bonding, none of the fitness work. And I've had to have a real overall management of training, which I don't always have to do. As ever, it comes down the left again. It seems to be paying off at the moment. Gets to the byline, delivers to the back stick, could do her with a crucial header. But what it does mean, spending all that time on the training ground, all of that time working on the intensity, the management of the squad, the resting of players, the tactics to make it a bit less intense, all of that means I am so invested when we're in a situation like this. I still believe that Wildstone will have a bad spell at some point. 
We just have to keep pace and we have to get a sign in eventually. As Davis goes back to Jones, we don't want to give Kingstonian a chance before the break. We don't want to give them any reason for confidence. As Jones plays to Jenks over the top, it's poor defending. Beresford misses. It was a great chance. And again, it's Hansen getting caught over the top. He's a holding midfielder. You can't blame him. But as we get towards the break, we're still 2-0 up. And going forward, we've always got that threat. Brilliant performance so far. It should be more in truth. Let's get into the second half. Let's keep the boys inspired. Let's hope they don't drop off at all. As it stands, Maidstone, unless their game was postponed as well, which I think it might have been at Farnborough, they're just falling away a bit now. So I want to try and make this a two-horse or three-horse race at most. As Cowan crosses into Adabomi, header just over the bar. It's much the same pattern in the second half. We haven't seen a big Kinstonian threat yet. But I don't want to get too excited because we've blown leads before. You've seen one of them here against Maidstone. I'm not going to get carried away. 20 minutes to go though. And we have got a game on Saturday. We've got to think about that. Ness is our only natural centre half. But do we have to rest him? He's on a yellow. I'm going to do it. It's a risk to bring on Avenal who's not had much football. But that's the position we're in. Smith in centre midfield. Not yet. Five more minutes. We'll just see if the centre half change works okay. If it does which it seems to have at the moment, will make the other changes. And, and I'm in the position where I'm more mindful to rest the defensive players, despite the attacking ones being so important, because there's so little depth there. So at right back again, I'm going to bring in Elam for Cowan. I think in midfield we're better covered. So I'm going to bring Harvey Nibs on for Kadua. We're just going to see how it works. If we have to rest Everett in training again, so be it. As we're just over 10 minutes to go, Friel loses out in the air and it's cleared long downfield to Avenal, the sub. Need a solid performance from him. He finds Elam at right back. He's got a man down the line in Harvey Nibs and he releases him. Can he get the ball into the box towards Adabomi? He does. Headed away as far as Friel. Scored a screamer in the last game and scores a screamer in this one too. Ben Friel is turning up when it really matters. Pile driver did not leave the floor. Little old daisy cutter as they used to call him. And with five to go, 3-0 to Dover Athletic. And we are not slipping up. We are piling pressure on Wildston. And the fact their game's been postponed and they're going to have fixture congestion to deal with really helps us. Because we said their slip-ups came after FA Cup games. After defeats when they had midweek fixtures. Against us on a bank holiday Monday with only 48 hours rest. We need them to be in more of those situations. Because without signings, that's our only chance at the title. Let's cross our fingers that we'll have some transfer work soon and have a look at when we've got Wealdstone and when we're next going to be back. Well, I know it's not too far away, but we're just building up ahead of steam now. It's January, which is EFL transfer window. We have had offers for Everett. We'll see if anything else happens. And we're going to have to come back pretty soon because we head to Wealdstone on the 1st of February. Only five games time, but I can't not show it. You wouldn't forgive me if I say, oh, look, we've won that and now we're top of the league. We have got to show that game on camera. Chippenham is the one after and they're chasing the playoffs themselves with a game in hand. So they're not going to be any mugs either. And again, it continues that trend of lots of games in quick succession. We've had midweek ones for the last three weeks and we've got them for the next three too. We finally get a week off after the Maidstone one, but who's going to bank against fixtures getting postponed again now? We've had one or two already this year. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a couple more. If you're looking forward to seeing what position we're in when we come back to fade the table toppers though, please do put a thumbs up on the video. I hope you enjoyed this one. Two really good performances. We are starting to keep clean sheets, but as you've seen, it's not convincing. We're short of players, particularly defensively. And if we come back and we've had another five under 18 sign and no senior players, I might well start losing my rag because I feel like it could cost us the title at this point. And what's annoying is knowing that if we sign two decent defenders, we'd probably go and walk the league the rest of this year. But of course, there is now the risk of losing people too. If you want to find out what happens, subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on for daily FM22 content. It's been a mega season in the Hemel Hempstead One Club story. You can find that playlist in the eye above, as well as the Twitch channel, the football podcast, and much more. But thank you again, as always, for watching. Your support is greatly appreciated. Let me know in the comments if you think we can win the league still. And I'll see you next time for Tabletoppers Wealdstone, a must-win game to catch them at the moment. I'll see you there to find out if we can.